what we're going to do, we looked at the flexion cluster before, so now we're going to look at extension. And we had done it initially with the range of motion. But what we're going to look at is a patient who cannot control their neutral zone and is borrowing range from one particular segment. In this case, even in standing, we notice there's just creasing right here. So we know already this joint is overloaded. Structurally with patients, before they even move, you kind of look at their body type, but you also see he likes to stand in hyperextension. So if he softens his knees a little bit, you notice that already takes some pressure off the back. So if we do this here, go ahead and walk your knees and soften your knees. And when you're standing in line at the store, what position are you in? Okay, so that is a great education for a patient, making them aware. Because there's only a couple different ways people stand. They shift this way, they'll shift this way, they'll be like this, or if their bait and scale is real high and they're hypermobile, they'll do this. And you'll see that you, uh, when you want, and that affects gait and function. So if we're putting the person in this category where we know that their movement is going to be painful in extension, they already have the creasing, there's somebody who can't control their neutral zone, we have a series of tests that fit in that cluster. If we go with the hypermobility cluster uh, that they have in the treatment-based classification system, which has changed a little bit uh, in 2016, we'll talk about that later. One of the clusters is the, the fact that the patient has pain in returning from flexion. So we go ahead and have them flex, and then when they return from flexion, they'll walk up their leg, They'll call it Gower sign, even though that's more neurological. And they'll have pain because they cannot return back because when they're in that flex position, the first thing they do when they come back is extend through that segment that's painful. So that's test number one that we're going to look at. Then we'll look at range of motion into extension itself. And when they extend, we'll see an increase increasing. Number three, we might notice that they have decreased tone in the multifidus on one side compared to the other. And we want to know if that, if there's a lag, so we'll do a multifidus lift test. We'll also look at a test where we think that they might be hypermobile. hypermobile. Cluster has prone instability test. We're going to talk about the anterior shear test as well. So we're going to use those clusters in this particular segment and do extension pivums before we do the, the, prone, uh, the, the um, prone instability test and the anterior shear test. So this is your most common pattern you're going to see. So we're just going to take it segment by segment and then we'll practice it. Okay, so the first clue again is range of motion. So we'll go ahead and have him bend forward and then come backwards into extension. We're going to look at extension range of motion, go all the way back. And you notice that he's gone into hip right now. So come back forward. So what I'm gonna do is have him stand this way and you guys can kind of be my eyes. So let's bend back through the spine. That's spinal motion, that's hip motion. So you want again, like we did with flexion, differentiate between the two. Number two, what's his starting position when he's doing the extension? We already noticed the creasing. If he's starting in a locked position, we'll have him soften his knees. This is all neuromuscular re-education for the patient and awareness. How do you stand at the store? I'm here, you bend backwards for me. Oh, that hurts, okay. Just for fun, let's try this. Can you soften your knees for me? They bend backwards. Oh, that's so much better. Good, I need you to own that. 
I need you to change your knee position. We'll give you some strategies so when you're, when you're in the store standing, you're not tweaking out this area. Oh, what about the shoulders? Shoulders are forward. Let's bring them up, back, and down. Go ahead and bend backwards for me. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, I need you to be aware of your shoulder position, so we're going to work on that. Range of motion usually has some kind of painful response or some kind of response with the patient. And by educating them and changing that, you have to make them own it in their lifestyle. This extension is also getting up from sitting. People slingshot themselves out from sitting and they have pain getting up from a chair. Exact same thing. So you train them for that. So that's the range of motion aspect, but remember, range of motion can be very quick, but this leads to our PIVMs, our special tests, and actually helps either prove or disprove our hypothesis.